Welcome to the History Slam podcast from ActiveHistory.ca. Here's your host, Sean Graham. Thank you, Adam. Welcome to the History Slam, everybody. I am Sean Graham coming at you today nearly live. We are in Nepean, Ontario. Uh, we ventured out from Ottawa because the man sitting across the table from me right now, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dr. Aaron Boys. Uh, is making his triumphant return to the show. Welcome back. Always good to be here. <laughs> so we're, we're here, we're, we're recording at your house in yes. part because you are a new father. I am. Congratulations. Thank you. The baby we're hoping will make her podcast debut a little later. Yeah, she uh, she might have a few words to say and now they may be unintelligible, but to her they're the most brilliant things ever. Exactly. So so we're hoping she'll, she'll get on the show. And one of the things that we're going to do in this episode... And, and it's weird. One of the things that babies make me think about is dying, uh, because because you know that's a very logical conclusion. Naturally, you know it, it's Jerry Seinfeld. Is, it's a bit, but it's true. Like you have babies because they're going to replace us. Like we're going to die, and they're going to take over. And yep. that's sort of the way life works, and that's fine. Uh, and also, 2016 was a year of a lot of famous celebrity death yes a lot uh so what we thought would be uh you know everyone's gonna die death is a natural part of life why not take a more fun look at death and maybe look at it from a different angle just as opposed to just being sad why not look at some of the shocking deaths that have occurred Mm -hmm. uh in the 20th century so we put together a list of what we have determined to be the top 10 most surprising shocking deaths from the 20th century. And our listeners are going to uh, are going to have their own opinions on this and this is what's going to make it most interesting and, and so I really am looking forward to the comments about this. We've left some names off that are quite obvious. Mm-hmm. And our rationale behind it is sometimes quite justified on other times we just didn't want to include it. Um, I'm hoping that uh, my wonderful wife will make an appearance later on and give her two cents and uh, tell you why we're stupid and why we didn't pick something very obvious. So, mm-hmm. again, yeah, it, she's been very. We've been sitting here as we've been compiling the list, putting it yeah, all together, and yeah. she has very strong opinions. Very vocal about uh, certain people that we didn't include. And so, this is what I think is sort of make it really interesting thing the fact that you and I have agreed on our top 10. Mm. But of course, this is going to differ completely from others. And again, I, I'm really interested to see what others have to, to think of or what they have to say and think about it as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it'll be a, a really interesting thing to go through because the, the term surprising or shocking, that's the hard part about this. It's not the most famous deaths. It's not the deaths that necessarily hurt people the most or people were most upset about. It's the ones that were... We, we tried to determine what they were shocking or surprising. That, that just deaths that are unexpected and capture people's attention. That's sort of what we've tried to do with this list. So that's why some names that you might expect won't be on there. Because it's the, the unexpectedness is what we really tried to capture in this in this list. Yes. And so we'll see how well we did. So let's just launch into it. Of course. So we're going to just go in reverse order as these lists tend to do. Yeah. So we'll start with number 10. And this one, for anyone who knows me, you won't be surprised that it's one that I really fought for (laughs) an inclusion on the list. And it's Ray Chapman. Uh, Ray Chapman was a baseball player for the Cleveland Indians, and he was playing a game against the New York Yankees. And a pitcher by the name of Carl Mays came inside, hit him in the head while he was at bat, and that unfortunately led to his death going out playing a baseball game. You don't think of baseball as a particularly violent game. Uh, You know, in football, unfortunately, we see people get paralyzed sometimes, hockey occasionally, when a blade nicks somebody in the neck, like these really scary moments. In baseball, you're not really used to seeing that. Uh, Uh, The only equivalent you can think of is a pitcher being hit in the head from a... An errant ball. Yeah. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Happ comes to mind a few years ago uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, being struck and dying mm-hmm. is just so unusual. Right. And and certainly, it's 1920, so he's not wearing a helmet. So obviously that's going to play a part in it. And at the time, 
it was common for pitchers to rough up the ball. Yeah. Uh, which made it darker, and especially in poor light, because you're playing during the day, if it's cloudy, whatever, it's hard to see the ball. And it was thought that that might have contributed to his death, that the ball was harder to see, so he couldn't get out of the way. So now there's the rules, which a lot of people get angry about when they watch a baseball game, that if a ball so much as as drops to the ground, like if the pitcher has the ball and just, oh, it slips out of his hand and it touches even the turf, they got to get a new ball. Or that whole controversy about pitcher or an umpire, say, going to the mound and a pitcher has a foreign substance, if you will, on his hand. And, you know, you wonder, well, why can't they do that? You know, what's the big deal? Mm. Well, that's why, because it alters the trajectory of the ball. And now, of course... In more recent times, it's for the ad, it gives the pitcher an unfair ad advantage uh, that the batter can't have. But obviously, going back to Ray Chapman, I mean, it was a very unfortunate set of circumstances yes. um, that led to his death. Yeah, and and certainly it's a name that comes up a lot. Like when we when we talk about, particularly with the pitchers, people will reference the Ray Chapman situation. Like we have to do stuff to protect the pitchers so that we don't have another Ray Chapman. Type situation, so it's a interesting in that respect. But in terms of the shockiness of it, he's he's not old. He's twenty nine years old, playing a baseball game, a professional athlete, in good shape. It's not somebody who you expect to die, and playing a game that you don't expect to get seriously injured in a life threatening way. Like that, I, that's what to me makes it shocking. And I find it really interesting when we were researching about this that it took another thirty years for helmets to be mandatory. Mm, yeah, the sheer fact that someone didn't or there weren't more cases like Ray Chapman yeah. is what's also somewhat shocking. Yeah, and, and particularly how often pitchers would come inside. Yes. Right? I mean, today, if you come inside, you get a warning, you, or you get ejected from the game, and then, if you dug in too deep in the batter's box, you were getting one in the ribs. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, balls get away, getting guys' heads, like, it's just, it, it really is a shocking. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, to me, a really shocking one. So, Ray Chapman, that. we have at number 10, as we continue on our list. Coming in at number nine. Now, this isn't necessarily one death, Mm -hmm. but two. And we justified it this way. And this, again, had a lot of input from Megan, my wife. um, Because Megan? Megan, yes. I'm not familiar with that name. I believe that's her name. I mean, I I believe she's... I don't know if we've ever given her a name on the show. Maybe you might remember my ex-fiance or the woman to whom I'm related to by marriage. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, yes, her. That's the one. Yeah, I thought that was her name. I thought that was on her birth certificate. Oh, I wasn't clear about yeah. it. Oh, see, that's my fault. Um, so what we have here surrounds the film series Poltergeist. Now, for anyone who is a horror aficionado, you will know well about this story. For those of you who are not or who have maybe seen the movies but are not familiar about this, uh, the original Poltergeist came out in 1982. And, of course, it's a very popular film series. To this day, a lot of people would add it as their top ten. But there's this thing called the Poltergeist Curse. And the reason it's behind this is because there were two deaths of two young cast members in between making the first and the third films. And it's often... People often will say that it's because of the film itself and the props that were used. Some people say that real skeletons were used, which kind of added to this. But what happened was Dominique Dunn, who played the eldest daughter, Dana, in the first film, she was actually killed by her former boyfriend on November 4th, 1982, at the age of 22. And then uh, six years later, Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann in all three films, died on February 1st, 1988, at the age of 12 due to complications from an acute bowel obstruction. So a lot of people say that it's because of this curse that you have these two young women and then a young girl, unfortunately, die so young. And that's the thing, I think, that makes this one shocking. The, the connection to the movie, I think, makes it more intriguing, more interesting. But the fact that it's two, that two people who are so young... Yeah, uh, and that's what makes know. it so, so shocking. And that's something I think we can... I think a good time to interject in here. When doing research for this list... There was a lot of people when I was going through and I said, oh, they died then? That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And I, I read about it. But then, of course, I looked at their age and someone in their 70s and 80s or even 90s or even 100 yeah. wasn't so shocking. 
And so a right. lot of so a lot of those people were omitted. And so if you're listening, when you kind of li- continue to listen to this and you hear where we're going with this, you won't be shocked to hear that there wasn't anyone in their 90s that, uh, right. that made the list. Right. And Jeff Ross, who's a comedian who I really like, has a bit about his his aunt died or his great aunt or somebody died who was in her late 90s. And he called up his cousin. He's like, hey, she she died. And his <laughs> cousin was like, how did she die? And the bit is basically, how do you think she died? She was 90 years old. She got she got run over at a Metallica concert. What do you think? Like, what what is dumb? Qu- like, so you know, for as sad as it is when people in their 80s and 90s die, yep. I mean, it's not the most shocking thing. No, and it can in the still world be, to hear. I mean, it's still a shock when, sure. say, a well-known figure passes at hmm. age 70, 80, 90. It's just not as surprising. And I yeah. think that's where, again, we come back to, we had to be very picky about so- shocking and surprising kind yeah. of going hand in hand. Because, yeah. I mean, I'll be shocked when the queen dies. In yes. that, it'll be sort of a jarring moment, but it won't be... As much of a surprise considering her age. Right. Like, if William dies, then it would, that would be more shocking. Yeah, he's or in, if, say, the, uh, the young... Prince or princess, what if they something, died. Yeah, if something terrible happened. That's, yeah. yeah, so that's sort of how we're trying to do it. So the poltergeist, because it's the age, and then it has that weird connection to the movie and the two of them in, in pretty close proximity. That, yeah. that's, that's where we come in in pretty shocking territory. So that's number eight, or excuse me, number nine. Number nine. And we move on to number eight, which is one that I, you know, this is a tough one. This is one I think we got some pushback on. We did. And and it's John Jacob Astor the fourth. Yes. Because, you know, the third was fine, but it was the yeah, fourth he, he, yeah. is where it's shocking. And if you don't know who John Jacob Astor the fourth was, he was a wealthy uh, businessman, yep. industrialist, uh, real estate guy who died on the Titanic. Exactly. And... Now, you certainly, I think, know a little bit more about this than I do, but he was believed to be one of the richest people in the world. Yes, absolutely. And again, coming back to the Titanic, of course, was shocking. The sheer fact that this unsinkable ship Mm -hmm. sunk, and now I'm sure there's some of you listening to this going, well, how could you pick one person out of the thousand plus that died that night. Well, the reason why John Jacob... <laughs> it's Astor, our show. We can do whatever, <laughs> we, can do whatever we want. <laughs> why John Jacob Astor is so shocking is, again, the fact that he was the richest on that ship at that time, or on the ship, mm-hmm. and one of the richest in the world. And in our society, at least nowadays, we don't tend to think of the wealthy being vulnerable to those kind of things. In mm-hmm. fact, we still find it shocking when the wealthy mm. die. And yet, yeah. just because you have money doesn't make your, you know, doesn't make you more invincible or less human than anyone right. else. It's just, I just, I, when you think about all the people who passed on the Titanic, the richest, or one of the richest people in the world died that night. Yeah, and which you wouldn't expect because, and, and as you mentioned before, with the life raft situation, you'd expect yeah. the richest person to get a life raft. I know there's the women and children first thing. But you would think that the richest think, person would, would try to get to, would try yeah. to get on there yeah. for whatever reason, but it does not appear that no. uh, JJ Astor the fourth made it on. Yeah, so he didn't make it, he didn't make it off, and he you know well over a, in today dollars he would be a billionaire. Oh yeah, and easily. Just and he was forty seven years old at the time. Yeah, so not an old man, nope. and, and and probably had a lot more to do professionally and more and, than likely yeah. and, and accomplish. And and the other thing too with the name Astor, it's a name that. You might still be familiar with because you might have stayed in an Astor hotel or, yeah. or and I or think whatever. that's what lends to the shock about that is that a very well known family, a member of a well known family member, mm-hmm. uh, died on the Titanic. Yeah. So we have John Jacob Astor at number eight. So if we move on then to number seven on our list. Of top 10 most surprising deaths. And this one, I think a lot more of our listeners are going to be able to recognize mm. right away. That being the death of the very famous, the very beautiful Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, Norma Jean. 1962, August the 5th, she was found. Uh, she was only 36 years old. And, and I think the thing that's really shocking about this, so she died of an overdose of... Barbiturates. Barbiturates. Which is an interesting word, um, and the the toxicology report or the the what is it called autopsy. the autopsy? Uh, they basically figured that there's no 
way in which you could have accidentally taken in all this stuff. Yeah. That it's a pr- probably she was trying to commit suicide and, of course, committed suicide if that is the case. So officially it was ruled as a probable suicide. Yeah. And what's really shocking about that is here's this woman in her mid-30s. From the outside, she appears to have it all. Uh, beautiful woman, uh, actress, wealthy, height dated of her, height of her career, dated Joe DiMaggio, linked to John F. Kennedy. Yeah, so I really just uh, from the outside, seeming like she has it all. Yeah, and I think we see that a lot more post two thousand, or we read about this a little bit more because our society is so invasive. But <laughs> celebrities, when they die, there's a little bit more. We we see that they too struggle with with uh, depression yeah. and, and public image and those kind of things like that. And so we're not as surprised maybe in celebrity deaths or if uh, certain celebrities take their own lives. Mm. When Robin Williams took his own life in 2014, everyone was really shocked by it because everyone, again, seeing Robin Williams on the outside, this, this very charismatic, this very funny man who clearly struggled for years that many of us didn't know about. And then when you read more about the situation, we kind of get a better understanding about maybe why he opted for suicide. Yeah, and I, f- I feel as though Marilyn Monroe is the same situation in that after the fact, people started to learn more about her life. She had a tough childhood. And you learn more about a lot of the issues she was battling. But in the moment, just outside looking in, living a, what appears to be a glamorous lifestyle... Yeah, 1962, and, yeah. there's not as, you know, there's no TMZ, there's right. no Twitter or anything like that. It's, it really would have come as a shock. Yeah, yeah. And, and as has been pointed out to us, Elton John wrote a song. He did. So, you know, there you go. Uh, so we have Marilyn Monroe in there at number seven. Now, number six, I think, is going to be slightly controversial. Slightly? Slightly controversial. But I don't know. We'll see. It's the day the music died. The day the music died. Better known as February the 3rd, 1959, when rock and roll musicians Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper were all killed in a plane crash. Mm. And of course, if we're talking about uh, people being immortalized in song, Don McLean's American mm-hmm. Pie, of course, recounts uh, this tragic day when all three of those uh, those musicians were killed. Mm. And, and certainly for me, as, as someone who is just utterly fascinated by aviation, of course, this is one... That, that I certainly would approve of being on this list. Uh, I think the backlash or sort of the argument against this would be a plane crash in 1959. Maybe not the most surprising thing in the world, but it's, I think it's the volume. It's the, they were all on the same flight. They're there together. I think that's really what makes it shocking. I, I, and that's where I, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, a plane crash, unfortunately, is not that rare. Mm-hmm. But the fact that three big names in rock and roll, especially in its infancy, were killed. I think that's the biggest thing. And all of them were quite young, too. I, mm-hmm. I, I think, once again, going back to the age thing, Buddy Holly was 22. Uh, Richie Valens was 17. And the Big Bopper was 28. Yeah. So, again, we're talking about young men who mm-hmm. were killed in possibly... The prime, or you know, starting to be the prime of their careers, yeah. or even who knows what they could have accomplished. I, I would also just point out that you know the Big Bopper was born in 1930. The fact that he died, I mean, he could still be alive today. He'd only be 86 years old at the moment, and that plane crash took away what could have been this cool thing of the Big Bopper in his 80s traveling around, still playing music. In this really cool, funky way, like it's it's sort of it's really, you know, the long term ramifications. Like yeah. these are people who still could be alive. Oh yeah. And so let's move on. This is another group one, and this one is a little different though because it's not a single day. Uh, so this one we might have stretched the limits a little bit, and this one I think we're gonna have a serious conversation about in terms of the surprise factor. But for this one, we've decided to group the assassinations. In the United States in the 1960s. Yes. The three principal ones that everyone points to, that being John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, and Martin Luther King Jr. That's right. So JFK, of course, famously November 22nd, 1963. RFK, also famously June 6th, 1968. And Martin Luther King, April 4th of 1968. And, of course, 1968 being one of the worst years in the history of time. 
uh, or at least in the history of the United States. It, it really was a, a bad year. And uh, there's been plenty of documentaries and, and stuff made about 1968, which I encourage you to watch. But we decided to group all these three together as emblematic or emblematic of really the death of the 1960s and the spirit of the 1960s. All three of those individuals marked sort of what people thought or hoped for a new era, a new time in American history, and their deaths really took away from that momentum, that spirit of the 1960s. So I think that's why we decided to group them together. And I mean, talking, we were talking about this as well, about how our political assassinations... Shocking. Now, of course, again, the act of murdering someone is a shock, but we're talking about politics. We're talking about, it's unfortunately a very common thing. We've yeah. seen it throughout history, political figures being assassinated. So why these three made the list as compared to the dozens, if not hundreds, if unfortunately thousands, uh, who have been assassinated over the years? Well, as Sean mentioned, we're talking about three big figures and figures that loom larger than life in the political psyche, especially in the United States. You can mention anyone in the U.S., those three names, and more than likely they'll know who it is that you're mm-hmm. talking about. Whereas there's others, of course, if you mention certain names, you're not entirely sure about who they were, uh, or sorry, who they were, what they did, mm-hmm. but JFK, RFK, and MLK Jr. really stand out. Yeah, I think that's why you have to group them together, too, because any one of them on their own in the shocking scale, maybe not shocking... But it's the three of them together in that time. I know there's a five-year gap from JFK to the other two, but it's you know, it's just sort of that that grouping of them is, but I, is I what makes it shocking. I think a large part of it is that they were all. You can group them all together for their politics and their views on society and mm-hmm. how they envisioned the United States moving forward. And of course, there was a backlash to that because obviously again we're talking about the the 60s and this this belief of the positiveness of the 60s and then it's robbed almost in 1968 there's there's just the collapse of it and and brings into the 70s and yeah yeah and that's sort of what and to me that's why it's on the list i i wouldn't put any one of them on individually no nor would i i i Right, I mean, like, let's be honest, political figures have been assassinated for thousands of years. Yes. You know, through, I think someone did a study, in the years between 1,000 and 2,000, the most dangerous job in the world was a monarch. Because... Really? Yeah, the most people who got killed on the job was a monarch. Yeah, that makes sense. Proportionally. Yeah. Right, so mm-hmm. a larger percentage of monarchs died than did laborers. Right? Yeah. Like, or in any other sort of profession, because... They just one. There's not that many comparatively, comparatively yes, speaking. Yes, and a lot of them got killed. Oh yeah, right? people just, searching for the throne yeah. or trying to just re- read Shakespeare. So it can't be considered shocking when one gets killed. Yes, for as unfortunate as it is. Exactly. Um, so that's that's sort of why we we group them together because it is the team of them, the group of them together yeah. that makes it shocking. And, yeah. And and again with the timing of it all. So that's right. So that's number five. So we're into the top. Four now. Yeah. And number four is an interesting one. Very much so. Arguably a controversial one. Yes. And we have Jean Benet Ramsey. Jean Benet Ramsey, yes. Uh, she was found dead in her home uh, at age six. She was killed uh, on either December 25th or December 26, 1996. Now, the reason why John Benet Ramsey is such an interesting case is, one, because of the circumstances surrounding her death. Mm-hmm. We're still not sure. Well, sorry, we know how she died. She died of asphyxiation, but we're not sure who killed her. Mm-hmm. There's many theories out there saying that the fa- that her father did it or that her brother did it and there was a cover-up. Uh, there was a ransom note, which has been challenged. And so the circumstances around her death make it so shocking. Mm. And I think the biggest part about it as well is that it made headline news here in Canada. We're talking about a child who was murdered. Now, I don't mean to sound rude or crass, but unfortunately children are killed all over the place at all times. But what stands out about this one is, again, the circumstances around it is that we're just not sure about it. And certainly there's, I think there's a racial and a class dynamic here. This is a well-to-do white suburban family. And this little girl is killed. And I mean, she's a blonde haired, very cute little girl. Beauty pageant. Uh, who, who just, who, who's killed like that. So certainly that contributes to it. And I think one of the reasons we've included it on the list 
is more so not not because of the act itself, which is of course no. terrible and and shocking on its own, but the reaction to it and the exactly. fact that it still is is talked about and people are still curious about it. There was a thing what last year, a couple years ago, where they interviewed one of the parents, I think, uh, on one of these these shows because one of the parents is now dead. I think her mother has died. Oh, okay, uh, she had cancer, and now it's. Uh, a situation where you, you know the answers you, you're still trying to find answers and, yeah, yeah and so the fact that it captured the 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 attention of so many people that's why we've included it on the list the other one that uh, that i found interesting in recent years uh and for for everyone that's actually listening in uh that is ellie my daughter who's yeah. uh seven months old she's making her first appearance here on the podcast yeah so we had one member of the family who has come on the show, which is exciting. We are, uh, yeah, as, as promised at the beginning that Ellie was going to make her appearance, and there she and was. There she so, goes. Yeah. yeah, I guess she she disagrees with our inclusion of Jean Benet Ramsey. I, I, guess. I guess so, unfortunately. But going back before <laughs> Ellie decided to interrupt me. Uh, <laughs> You're going to have to get used to that one. There, I buddy. guess so, yeah. absolutely. Uh, one of the crazier theories I've heard is that uh, Katy Perry, is Jomini Ramsey? Oh yeah, that's my that's one of my favorites. I I, I, I kind of like I kind of like that uh, that theory. theory so. Yeah. so that kind of also what kind of stuck out in my mind yeah. about that circumstance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it, it's yeah one of those ones that just sort of there's and, so many unknowns yeah. which makes it surprising. Yeah, and actually that feeds in nicely to number three, which is the Lindbergh baby. Yes, uh, from 1932, the abduction and later. Or excuse me, the kidnapping and then later murder of Charles Lindbergh's son, Charles Lindbergh Jr. Yes, that's right. Charles Lindbergh Jr. was uh, abducted from his home on March 1st, uh, 1932, and his body was found on May 12th, 1932. And after a medical examination, they determined that the cause of death was a severe skull fracture. Mm -hmm. Now, what makes this one also very interesting is still not entirely sure who did it. Yeah. So they arrested somebody, Richard Hauptman, and they they had a trial, and it didn't. From whatever thing I've read about it, it doesn't appear to have been a flimsy trial. One of these trials that sort of kangaroo court. No, he's guilty before he walks in. It seems like it was a pretty legit trial. Now, someone who knows more than I could certainly correct me on that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, it was over a month, and then he was executed, and he maintained his innocence. Yep, but that's not uncommon nope. for for people on death row. Certainly, mm-hmm. uh, now that doesn't mean that some people on death row aren't in fact innocent. Yep, um, but it's not uncommon for people to to maintain their innocence. But there are still questions, and that's and I think that's what makes it so fascinating. Once again, mm-hmm. just like. Uh, John Benny Ramsey, it's that we just don't know. Yeah. Now, 1932, of course, newspapers are widespread. Information is very easily accessible, mm-hmm. but we just, the information is just not there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing too, the thing that's different about, uh, the Lindbergh baby versus John Benny Ramsey is Charles Lindbergh, obviously a very noted figure, a yeah. famous aviator. Again, my bias towards aviation, I guess, showing, but, uh, a guy who people knew and people were familiar with. So what, what's sort of, I guess, shocking in a sense is that perhaps it's not surprising that someone would try to get some sort of a ransom out of him as a famous guy. You know, the 1930s, in the midst of the Depression, people yeah. are robbing banks more often. Like, these sorts of crimes, maybe not surprising. But the fact then that the baby is killed yeah. in this very violent manner yeah. and... Then you have this investigation and the questions around it. This was the first, well, maybe not the first. This was one of the many trials of the century. Oh, yeah. A, a very well-known figure. And anytime that happens, and we've seen it in the past, we'll see it, unfortunately, in the future, mm-hmm. that fame brings these kind of tragedies. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they just seem to befall certain people, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. it's another example with Charles Lindbergh. Now, we'll go to one that you and I have more personal experience with, because yes. we were not around in 1932. We were not. And this is one that I, I think if people come into this, this is one that they would have expected. And I hope that this is one that we don't face much criticism for or feedback against. I hope not. And that would be Princess Diana on August the 31st, 1997. And this is one of those moments, I mean, for my parents' generation, or our parents' generation... Yeah. 
uh, and, and older when you know they remember where they were when JFK died. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Princess Diana died. As do I. Yeah. Uh, I remember sort of what the situation was, where I was. It was in a hotel at a baseball tournament. Yeah. And, and you just remember it. So I think for, for both of us, that would contribute to us putting this as high as we have. I remember waking up that morning. My family and I were supposed to go to Canada's Wonderland. So for those of you not from Ontario, uh, it's an amusement park. And we were supposed to be going there that day. And I remember coming upstairs and my mom was crying and was inconsolable. And I was, I was, wanted to know what the matter was. And she had told me that Princess Diana died. Now, I was 11, but I didn't really put the pieces together as to I knew okay someone had died but I didn't understand why it was so shocking or why it was so upsetting because as an 11 year old I didn't know much about Princess Diana and the attachment that so many people felt towards this woman and so we ended up canceling our trip to Wonderland that day Uh, the weather was bad too Uh, (laughs) but my mom was very upset and understandably so and so I remember this one Mm. and the circumstances and I remember reading about all the controversy and the conspiracies about how this could have been an inside job and I think I remember reading one crazy conspiracy that uh, Prince Charles had something to do with it Mm. like he yeah. Arranged it somehow. Yeah, it was a hit. And get her out of the way because she was causing trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing that, that contributes to the shocking part of it is how, right? She's trying to get away from paparazzi. Yeah. And the car crashes. And then they're taking photos of her in the wreckage. After the car has crashed. Yeah. So it, like, it's, I think that contributes to the shock of it. To make a terrible parallel, the, the Ray Rice video. Like, yeah. You know, he, there's the incident. People hear about what happened. But when you see it... It becomes more real or more shocking or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that's a factor in in this situation as well. And the sheer fact that over 32 million people in Britain watched yeah. the funeral out of a, country, of a country that has a population of just over 60 million. That's, mm. that's insane how mm. many people. So you can tell how many people her death touched. Mm. And, and I think, I, again, we're talking about someone who was only 36. Yeah. Like a young person by today's standards about how long we're living, 36 is not not old. No, and so you don't expect it. Uh, You don't expect to hear something like that. No, and once I mean, we're talking about a car crash. Car crashes happen every single day, Mm -hmm. but it's the person, obviously, again, and that's why she made the list. Yeah, and and it's it's different, too, than a political assassination. Because if you heard that a monarch gets killed... By an assassin, that's different than this is. They're just trying to drive yeah. away from paparazzi. They're like, just trying to live their life. Yeah, so that's sort of that's really the the part that really gets gets at it. Yeah. and, and is is really shocking. Yeah. So now we we've reached number one. So let's do a quick recap of our of our top ten so so far. So number ten, Ray Chapman, baseball player. Number nine is the Poltergeist Curse. Yes. Number eight, we have John Jacob Astor the Fourth. Yes. Uh, number seven, Marilyn Monroe. Number six, The Day the Music Died. Number five, The Political Assassinations in the United States in the 1960s. Number four, John Benet Ramsey. Number three, The Lindbergh Baby. Number two, Princess Diana. And of course, number one, The Challenger Disaster from yes. 1986. Yes, the year I was born, so that's why it stands out to me, because I remember, like, once again... Do you remember parents, where you were that day? I do yeah. actually remember. Yeah. I, I was not born yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I remember my parents uh, talking a lot about this on our trip down, our family trip down to Florida one year, when we visited Cape Canaveral, and my mom recounting the story to me, because, again, 1986, my birth year, it was very important. The fact that NASA had experienced tragedies in the past and had experienced failures in the past but not to this degree Mm -hmm. the sheer fact that the space shuttle exploded 73 seconds into its takeoff on live television it's just unimaginable Mm -hmm. uh it it, it almost seems like it's out of fiction that this could happen yeah and again this is another one where you know if this was 30 years before then maybe not as shocking but this was 1969 when Neil Armstrong was supposed to be and crew were going to the moon, sure. Mm-hmm. Again, very shocking, but it's 1969. The technology is not great, but we're talking 17 years later. Yeah. 
the technology is much better. Mm-hmm. The the science behind it is yeah. much better. Yeah, because it's not just the Americans working on this. The Soviets had, had been working on space exploration too. So and, and a lot of co- cooperation between them. So it's it's something that yeah during the the space race and having a disaster like this might not have been as shocking as it was in 1986 and then add in the fact that you have these the the, the ordinary people who aren't tr- necessarily trained astronauts their teachers uh, or at least the one teacher yeah. going up in the space shuttle and that would draw more people to watch it to the program and then it happens on live television and it's it's just sort of the and then the audio of it too is remarkable when you hear because you hear the controller mm-hmm. and then it, the ship blows up and then it's just sort of silence oh yeah and and sort of what do we do and i think i think you said it or you nailed it right there is the fact that it happened on live television mm-hmm. All of these deaths that we that we've been speaking about, of course. Now again, the JFK assassination. There's footage and whatnot, yeah. but it's not to the same degree. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about millions of people watching what is mm. supposed to be a monumental moment for human beings. Like mm. we're talking, and we're not talking about something that's localized to one country yeah. or one family. We're talking about all of us. This was for space exploration, mm. for human knowledge. Yeah. And tragedy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's the thing that, that really is why we put it at number one. It's sort of the international yes. relevance of it. And yes, it's an American ship with Americans on board. But it, it, this, going into outer space, there's more of a, a general human push to do that. Yeah, it transcends nationality. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, the video of it is interesting. And as you were talking, I was thinking... You know, there's been other, there have been deaths that have occurred on screen, and and you wonder if the this blowing up, the the Challenger ex- explosion in the sky, is it is it somehow almost less violent than seeing somebody get shot, say like a, than seeing a political assassination mm-hmm. uh, live? And I don't know, like it, it's interesting because you you don't see a person, like the humanity is almost taken out of it. To a certain degree, that if you see somebody get shot, that's a human being who just got shot. The ship blows up. You don't see the people in mm-hmm. the ship. You just see the ship blow up. So it, it's an interesting question in that regard. But but it doesn't take long for you to compute yes. <laughs> that there are people on board and, and, and that that's sort of what – and the, obviously the ramifications of what that means. Yeah. So we put Challenger as the most shocking one in the 20th century. Now, there are a bunch that we left off. So we'll do – our honorable mentions right now, which sounds weird. It, says, it sounds almost morbid mentioning it that way, but I can't yeah. think of any other way to mention it. Yeah, and these are ones that, and some of them we, we've gotten some pushback already um, as we've been sitting here putting this, this list together. And I guess the ones that people would probably come up with first, I would think, are the famed group of 27, what is it, the Forever 27? The Forever 27 Club. For those of you who are not familiar with this, this is a group in which there's, a, unfortunately, a substantial number of uh, musicians, actors, you name it, uh, who died at 27 years old. Mm-hmm. And so Forever 27, of course, they will always be uh, 27. Um, some of the more famous members of that group are Jimi Hendrix, who died in 1970, mm-hmm. Janis Joplin, who also died in 1970, Jim Morrison died in 1971, and uh, we've got Kurt Cobain uh, in 1994. Yeah, and out of those, out of that list, I think in terms of shocking, I would have to say that probably it's the Kurt Cobain one that is the most shocking, because the other ones with Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, there were rumors and speculation and if not outright knowledge of their issues with drugs and drug abuse. So the fact that they overdosed, maybe not as shocking. And that's, I think, why we left them off the list. Exactly. I mean, I, I like the idea of the Forever 27 Club being included as the honorable mention just because we're talking about some really big names here. Mm. But again, just because the sheer... Uh, circumstances surrounding their deaths aren't as surprising. Right. So so they didn't make the, the top ten. James Dean was another one. Uh, famed actor in the 1950s. Died in a car crash. And that one I think was a tough one. Young guy in a car accident. 
it's similar to Diana, but I think our feeling was that it's, it's definitely with relation to Princess Diana that she had a larger global significance than yes. James Dean. Yeah. Uh, and that one, Bob Marley is another one. Yep. Um, that we we thought of at 36 years old, died of uh, he was he just got sick and, and died. Yeah. Uh, yep. So that was uh, another one. But again, I don't know what we would take off. For that, and, no, and, and when no. someone's sick, like when, when you get sick and the knowledge is public, people have a chance, to, I guess, to prepare themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not as sudden. And that's why I've, I've got on my, on my list here a couple others who, who had gotten sick and then died. I've got Jim Henson, who died in 1990, had health complications. Yeah. Uh, Graham Chapman of Monty Python, uh, again, also health complications, mm. which uh, which led to death. Terry Fox, when he died in 1981, it was shocking because of who he was and what he was yeah. doing. But of course, the cancer element removes the shock because sure. he unfortunately was ill. And so when you, when you put those ones in there, like you mentioned, Sean... Health problems, it's, again, it's still upsetting. We're not downplaying the, the human element no, of that, no. but just of how shocking it was that yeah. death followed. Yeah, and I, I guess the, the one illness one that we, we did talk about was Freddie Mercury. Yes. Because it was people weren't aware of his health issues until the day before. Like, exactly. He didn't, he didn't announce it. So that makes it a little more jarring yeah. is sort of how that happens. But then when it was revealed that he was battling... AIDS, it makes a little more sense that, of course, that death had followed yeah. due, due to his illness. Yeah, but if you were a fan, you didn't have time to prepare yourself. No, exactly. And that's sort of the shocking part. And then the one I think that we got the most blowback from yeah. for not including on our list was John Lennon. And he doesn't belong there. <laughs> so the, the issue with John Lennon, the reason John Lennon didn't make the list, at least from my perspective, I was talking about this with some folks at the curling club and they were talking about how John Lennon openly talked about his fear of, of crazed fans. And if this was something that was in the public discussion or in the public arena, that there was a genuine concern for his safety because of public, because of crazed fans, then the shock value of his death to me goes away a little bit. Yeah. I, again, we're not saying that John Lennon's murder is not shocking in and of itself. It's mm-hmm. just the circum, once again, the circumstances, the fact that he openly talked about this removes somewhat of an element. And that's why those that made the list didn't really have those. Yeah. I mean, I, you put him at 11. I would put him at like 11. I just don't think it's in the top 10. Yes, he's a Beatle. He's an important guy. And we're even getting blowback now from someone who doesn't want to talk, apparently. And, uh, but yeah, so but that's sort of the rationale behind behind that. And then a couple other these ones aren't really all that shocking or even that notable. They're just more interesting. Um, Dick Wortham, he was a line judge at the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. He got hit in the groin with a serve and fell because you get hit with a tennis ball. Yep. And he cracked his head and, and died. And it, it's just sort of the shock value. Like, who dies from a tennis ball? Like, yeah. or, or something involving a tennis ball. That, yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. And then Boris Segal, who was a director who stepped out of a helicopter and went the wrong direction while he was filming and was uh, decapitated. Yeah. Uh, so those are ones that are more odd and, and weird than necessarily shocking. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, I had a couple others on my list here that, uh, I was, uh, that I was considering and I'd spoken with colleagues about one of them was Phil Hartman when yeah. he, uh, when he was murdered in 1998. I know that was a big shock being yeah. a huge Simpsons fan myself. Um, losing Troy McClure, uh, was really big and, uh, you know, again, I was 12 when it happened. So again, just trying to understand what what the long term yeah. implications mean for for that. And um, for me, it was more news. I like news radio, and that was th- that show was still on when he was killed. And then, of course, they 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 kept the show going, and I believe the character died in the show yeah. of yeah. Bill McNeil. And then the show really just never it wasn't the same. Yeah. And then, uh, a couple others that I had on here was uh, the murder of Tupac in mm-hmm. 1996, and then followed by Notorious B.I.G. in 1997. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I had a discussion with a colleague about this one, and he made a really good point is that the culture surrounding that form of rap 
is not surprising in the sense that someone would be murdered because of the subject matter. Right. But we're talking about two men who were gunned down, and really since then, it's been so few and far between, and they were big names. Mm. And the fact that still, I mean, there's still the debate of whether or not Tupac is still alive. Yeah. There are some out there who truly believe that he's still alive and that he's in hiding and that he's, he will come back mm. um, at some point. So I think Tupac's death was really, was really yeah. shocking. Yeah. Well, um, you could probably even put like Andy Kaufman in that category yeah. of maybe he's not actually dead or he's going to come back and, and he's just pulling the greatest prank in the history of, of comedy on everybody. And, and so that, that the allure of these, I don't want to call them necessarily conspiracy theories, I think adds to the, the legacy. Yeah. And then, uh, the, the other one that I had, um, well actually there's, there's two, uh, when we talk about the day the music died, I, I, I mentioned, when we were putting this list together, potentially linking this one um, from 1959, the plane crash with Leonard Skinner yeah. in 1977 when Ronnie Van Zant was killed. Now, the, why I think that's really interesting is the fact that that plane was actually originally chartered by Aerosmith, but someone on their entourage had determined that that plane was not uh, was not safe right. and that they refused to take it. But Leonard Skinner, t- uh, members of the Leonard Skinner, got on that, crashed. Ronnie Van Zant was mm-hmm. killed. So try to link that there. And the other one was uh, Randy Rhodes, who was one of the original guitarists for Ozzy Osbourne when he had his solo career. Uh, he, too, was killed in a plane crash mm-hmm. uh, at the age of 25 mm-hmm. in 1982. Um, so we could have put those in there, but I think... Uh, I mean, we already had a plane crash. Yeah, and I think Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper, yeah. as a collective... Yeah. Or it was probably a little more shocking, the fact that all three of them were killed at once as compared to other members. Right. And then, you know, the song also probably adds to the yeah. significance. And yeah. it, it's interesting. We have multiple people who have had songs written about them yeah. <laughs> on this list. And maybe we're just super biased towards this political or excuse me, the popular culture element of yeah. it. Yeah. And certainly these are all people in the public figure and, and definitely very much, uh, in the Western world, if not the North American world. And this isn't really a global list. No, and that was the one thing that I really tried. Uh, I know when I was doing some background reading about this, I tried to include others not from... Now, I'm re- reading over this, 9 out of the 10 are from the United States. Mm. And that's not to say that, obviously, other events around the world weren't shocking. It's just they weren't resonating with me. Right. And that's and, it, and for, for right or for wrong, I tried to connect them, but... I couldn't make a personal connection one way or the other yeah. as to how they were shocking or if, if they were so surprising. And so every time I added a name, I kept thinking to myself, I'm really stuck in the Anglosphere. I mm. mean, I wanted to include Franz Ferdinand in 1914, but everything all considered, once we, yeah. again, we talk about political assassinations and the excellent studies that have been gone on about the First World War, it's really not shocking no. that and he was assassinated in 1914. Yeah, just, yeah, given the political environment and everything else, like it's, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, and when you're coming up with a list, you, there's, you just gotta cut sometimes. And that's you know? there. And uh, again, for our listeners who are making up their own list, and I really hope that uh, they're posted, um, you'll see how difficult it is to come up with a list um, of, of 10. When you're talking about, uh, I think the last time I was looking this up, we're talking about 20 plus million people die every single year. Right. So how can you narrow it down? Yeah. So 20 million plus every year. Yeah. And with such a vague yes, starting point exactly. of shocking, surprising, it, 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 uh, I've very much enjoyed the, the, the process of trying to figure it out. Yeah. It was, and it was just really interesting to, to think about others that you don't really think about. Yeah. And we, too often we think about death in a, in a really sad way. Let's think about it in a more positive, upbeat way. I don't know how to respond. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we have any commentary from the peanut gallery? And we're getting a no. So uh, <laughs> the peanut gallery is good. What about the smaller peanut gallery? No. no. no she want to talk, so. so there's our list. We hope you I like it. Yeah, one. we hope you like it. If you don't, make your own and tell us what you think. Exactly. That's, <laughs> and that's the best part about this is that there's no right or wrong on this. This is just no. what us two chuckleheads came up with. Exactly. And I think it's good. I mean, after the year that 2016 was... You know, let's look at, with all the celebrity deaths, let's sort of take a lighter approach to it. Yeah. Uh, and, and look at it a different way. 
And the last two episodes of the History Slam, we, we had that nice hiatus in the fall. We come back with, I think, two really good intellectually stimulating episodes. So it's been fun to have more of a, a relaxed, uh, uh, perhaps less intellectual episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that is, of course, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Dr. Aaron Boyd. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Questions, comments for the podcast, historyslam at gmail.com. Twitter, at Dr. Shawnee Fever. And if you're out and you see Enrico Palazzo, please say hi for me. Thanks for listening to the History Slam podcast. Be sure to check out Active History for more features, articles, and be sure to subscribe on iTunes.